Pickles, fermentation, all these lovely things are easy to make at home and keep for a very, very long time. That's why they've been so popular and trendy over the last couple of months. In the Philippines, we have a very special one called achara. It's made out of grated papaya and it's so good and you guys should try to make it. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> So if you're here from the previous Filipino barbecue episode uh, where I used a little bit of achara, this is a recipe for that. Couldn't fit it in there, it would have been too long. But I thought, okay, if I'm gonna make a whole video about pickled papaya, then I'm gonna show you how to do variations. So the first thing I wanted to do was think about whether or not I could make a quote unquote kimchi version of achara. Um, and that would mean not adding any vinegar and just fermenting things until they become sour. So just naturally producing that sourness versus adding vinegar to it. I'm also gonna show you how to make what I call a very standard, basic, average achara. And at the same time, I'm gonna show you how you can use that same achara brine and then use it in other vegetables. So I'm gonna show you how to do a cucumber version of it. So you get three in one. Let's get pickling. First thing you want to do is grate a bunch of unripe papaya. It's quite tedious to do, but easy. Cut off both ends, then split them in two. Remove all the seeds and fibers in the middle, and then just peel it clean. So there are three main ways you can cut this. You can do it Thai sometime style by hitting it on one side lightly and then shaving it. With this, you'll get longer, harder strands. You can then also just grate it traditionally. Um, with these graters that at one point in your life you're going to grate your knuckles off, it's going to suck. Or the same technique as the first one, just use a peeler for thinner strands. I'm aiming to get about like six or seven cups here, so I'll be using two papayas. For our traditional chata, we're going to add two teaspoons of coarse salt to three cups of papaya first to let this sit out and draw out the moisture uh, for about 30 minutes. While waiting for this, you can prep your other vegetables. A perfect partner to papaya is jicama, but I couldn't find any at the supermarket. So we're gonna be using two cups of grated carrots, uh, one cup of red bell peppers, half a sliced red onion, and two tablespoons of ginger, and a nice long red chili for a little bit of heat. After 30 minutes, we're gonna place our papaya into a cheesecloth or a muslin cloth and just squeeze out as much water as you possibly can. Once dried out, mix that in with the other vegetables. For our brine, bring to simmer about one cup of water, two cups of coconut vinegar, one tablespoon of crushed garlic, and one half cup of sugar. You can taste the brine, so it really comes down to what you prefer. Some people like more sour achatas, some people prefer really sickly sweet achatas. It's a brine, so you can taste it, and whatever the flavor that comes out here is more or less what you're gonna end up with. So once this is simmering, just cook it down for about five minutes. Get some jars out, pack them in, and cover the whole thing with brine. For our kimchi achara, we're gonna mix three cups of papaya, half a cup of red bell peppers, and half a cup of carrots together. We're gonna to make a very simple water and salt brine here. Um, you'll need more or less five cups of water mixed in with three tablespoons of kosher salt. Just use that ratio going forward. Once mixed, that's gonna cover our vegetables. Cover the bowl and just leave this outside for at least four hours. About three hours in, get a food processor out, add in two red onions, eight pieces of garlic, and a three inch piece of ginger. Blitz all of this together. In a bowl, one third cup of sugar, one third cup of fish sauce, our blitz vegetables, and our brine vegetables. Shake off all the excess water. Mix this well and then add in however much gochujado you might want. I use about half a cup. Again, you can really taste it at this point. We're not really doing any cooking or anything. Um, so it's really up to you how much heat you wanna add. Once done, pack this into your fermentation crock or an airtight jar or your Tupperware. It's really important that you press it down so that the vegetables are covered with whatever juices they might release. This is going to go anywhere from two to eight days out in your kitchen. It really depends how hot it is where you live. 
the hotter, the faster the fermentation, the colder, the slower the fermentation. What's important is that you do taste it every day. You're looking for like a slight tanginess, like a very subtle vinegar flavor. Um, so once achieved, transfer that to a jar and keep it in the fridge to slow down any further fermentation. For our cucumber pickle, very simple. Slice up four Lebanese cucumbers thinly. I like to use these because they're nice and crunchy. Great, two tablespoons of ginger and one teaspoon of turmeric. Place that in a jar with two chopped red chilies and a third cup of sliced spring onions. We're only using the white stalks here. Mix all this together. Great, two tablespoons of lemon rind and throw that in as well. Pack it into a jar and then cover it with the same brine we used for the traditional achata. Don't make a mess like I did. And now we wait at least 24 hours before you dig into this. Okay, time to try everything. Uh, we're gonna start with the standard achata. So usually this is like really almost syrupy, but I'm not a fan when pickles are too sweet. I really do look for that sour, sweet balance. And that is spot on. Look, there are tons of ways you can make achata. Some people add raisins, some people put um, turmeric in there. Um, depending on which province you're in, they'll probably use different types of vegetables that they might find, and that will then be pickled. So it really is up to you and what you can find in your environment. That is proper delicious. The next one is, well, you don't, I don't know if you find a lot of pickled cucumbers in the Philippines, but I'm using more or less the same brine as the standard achata. Um, I just added some turmeric for a really cool color, and a little bit of kind of like that peppery flavor. Ooh, <clears throat> and I definitely added more chilies here. Much hotter, beautiful though, like this in a sandwich or even just on some rice, gorgeous. And finally the last one, which was a pure 100% experiment. I'd never done this before, our kimchi style of char. So again, all the, the sourness that we get here, unlike these two, where most of it came from the vinegar that you're adding, here was developed naturally through the process of fermentation. It's really important to put it in the fridge to stop that fermentation so it doesn't get too funky. Well, it has some spunk in it. I mean, very reminiscent of kimchi flavors, but it has that hint of the achata sweetness, which is a really cool balance. Um, so all these three, you could probably keep in the fridge, I'd say months, to be safe, I'll say weeks. But usually I think uh, pickles you can keep for a very, very long time, especially in a stabilized environment like a fridge. Um, and they're absolutely beautiful on anything, from fried rice, to like a beef sandwich. So have fun with it. Don't limit yourself to these vegetables. Use whatever you want. Just use that base brine and base process. Um, and yeah, 